love y'all sitting trans by the Duna Man Duke Up. <laughs> Basically, you know, I'm from a little town called uh, Southern Pines, North Carolina. I moved to Winston-Salem and um, eventually I came to Jacksonville, Florida, where you know, I pretty much grew up at, and um, I've been doing music for a while. You know, uh, it's been some years, you know, I kind of grew up in it. My dad was good friends with uh, Jam Master J, who was a uh, Run DMC DJ, you know, RIP. And um, since a kid, I've been doing it. And it kind of led up to now, you know what I'm saying? Uh, being from, originally from North Carolina, and then moving to Florida, I was able to kind of clash both of the sounds in together. You know, uh, at one point I was listening to Wu-Tang, and I moved down to Jacksonville, and they listening to uh, Trick Daddy, you know what I'm saying? So I was pretty much able to uh, take both of the two sounds and make my sound, you know, Duquan, a.k.a. Decap sound. It's been, it's been a pretty, been pretty, pretty good struggle, you know what I'm saying? But Honestly, I wouldn't replace anything I've been through for nothing. I mean, I was all worth it. The teachers I got from, you know what I'm saying, growing up little, you know, going to studio to studio, you know, where niggas robbing you for money, you know, you paying. Because back in the days, you know, you paying about $100 an hour. And you got that little four-track recorder. You got to keep looping the songs, you know what I'm saying? And, now, you know, things that changed, and that's pretty much where I'm at. You know, uh, I've been blessed to drop multiple albums. Uh, been blessed to meet people like uh, the Jazz Walkers, you know. good. My, my opinion, one of the best directors out, up and coming. Uh, my management, you know what I'm saying, DJ Walton. Now we just ready, man. We just ready to, to, to do what we do best. I had the privilege to be a part of a showcase uh, hosted by Alicia Keys, and um, it, it was crazy because uh, I was at the Martin Luther King Day Parade. I was with some of my homeboys, and they introduced me to this guy, you know what I'm saying? And he turned out to be a great friend of mine, which is, his name is DJ Walton, uh, who is also, you know, a manager and uh, of mine. And um, he pretty much put me on the showcase that he was throwing to see what I could do. And uh, I killed it, man, you know what I'm saying? And history was there, you know, started there. I signed with uh, From the Ground Up Music. And then through that, I developed my own label, DCMG, where I signed myself. And uh, one thing that always stuck to me about what an artist said was ludicrous. Like, I signed myself. And I said, shit, I need to do that too. I need to sign myself. So it's kind of like a FTGU Music slash DCMG thing. You know what I'm saying? But we, we read it. We got them projects, we dropping them out. And, you know, it's gonna be on. From the ground up music, DCMG. All right, we just got up out the barbershop, my man Rami. Yo. Set the trends. Always, oh, always. Put your boy in there with that line, boy. <laughs> that line, man. Talk to hey, him, man. The hottest dude in Duval, y'all. No lie, no lie. Watch out for me coming. Hopefully I'm still when he when he when he go to Japan, Yo, hopefully he, he call me. He there. He cut his hair. He there. So all right, there. All right, all right, all right, there it is. A <laughs> Duke in the house, y'all. I just cut his hair. If y'all in Jacksonville, come to setting trends. I'll take care of y'all. All right? Already. Appreciate all right. you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. Do y'all thing. Alright. All right. Right. <laughs> so on the other side, it says no trespassing. Oh, yeah, you do that too, well. I say, man, it's not a lie, hello. Thank you, Lord. Say, what's up? There you go. All right. There it is. Okay. And it's red, they're blue today, so it's still brown. They're brown, that's why they're blue, okay? The soup, man. You know, we gotta eat good. Come on, man. Work hard. Work hard. There it is. Shibang, shibang. Oh, 
Yeah, in my in my career so far, I've been blessed to be on um, a couple of Bow Wow tours, the Wanted Tour, the Price of Fame Tour. Uh, I was on a couple of dates on Young Jeezy Street Dreams Tour. Um, couple spots dates with Lil Wayne. I was able to do St. Martin Summerfest. Check that out. They got a website. Um, I was able to, uh, I actually headlined um, a couple shows and one of the, the, one of my best shows I headlined was the show with uh, Alicia Keys Super Bowl uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. Which also, you know, starred my homie, you know, Jermaine Paul, the winner of Divorce Season 2. You know what I'm saying? And we, uh, I've been able to do songs with people like Jermaine Paul, uh, Young Capone, Two Pistols, Freeway, Killer Mike, that's my dude, Grind Time Gang. Um, just a lot of great artists, man. And from the shows I've been able to do, you know, it's kind of worked me up and showed me how to put on a good show. In a lot of ways, you know what I'm saying, I feel like a veteran, you know what I'm saying? When I when I go out there, you know what I'm saying, when the whole team go out there, shouts out to William Boston, Cam, DJ Joe Crump, we kind of learn, you know, oh, well, also, <laughs> more importantly, I can't forget the Ball For Real Tour, you know what I'm saying, which was put on by Mountain Dew. I co-headlined that with the Shop Boys when they was in their prime, you know what I mean? We toured every city like it was like the new and one. They changed over to uh, to ball for real. So we was on there with Spider and one uh, Ao uh, half man half amazing, and we toured everywhere from New Orleans to Madison Square Garden. You know, and I was actually sponsored by Freeze Diamonds too. They hooked your boy up with some jewelry. That was that was a real good thing, man. You know, being able to go to you know New Orleans and work every tour day from New Orleans to uh, Madison Square Garden. Those were some good shows. Pretty much all my time lately, I've just been really working on this Guts album. Uh, it's something that I'm real passionate about. You know, it's one of them things where, well, first of all, I spell it G-U-T-S-S. -S. And to me, that's how Guts should be spelled. Because when people say Guts, they don't be like Guts. They be like Guts. When you watching NFL and stuff, they like, it take guts. They let that S sound out. And uh, so anyway, that's why I added on the extra S. But uh, it pretty much stands for grinding uncontrollably to stand strong. And that's my testimony. That's your testimony. It's everybody's testimony who does stuff that everybody else ain't really believe in, but they just do it. You got some people that get the, you know, they get the good outcome, what they expect to happen, happen. Then you got some people, that nothing happens. But at least you did it, and and that's what I'm about with this project, man. I done kind of about, I done kind of like blocked out everybody, and said, look, I need to do me. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, honestly, check, hold on, man, check this out. I would look Russell Simmons in his eyes, Donald Trump in his eyes, and and, and just tell them straight up, if they was to ask me. Why should I buy this album? I'd be like, you, you. first of all, it's a hot album. Second of all, it take, you, you got to have that guts, man. You know what I'm saying? Because it took guts to do with you. I look, Russell, I'd be like, bro, it took guts for you to drop out of college. Tell your dad that was a preacher, that you didn't want to go to school no more. You wanted to sleep on uh, Rick, Rick Rubin's floor to start Def Jam. And now y'all don't start a Def Jam. It paid off. I would do the same thing for Donald Trump. Uh, uh, it took guts for him to do what he's doing. Um, the guys that slept on the floor, Tom Cruise and and uh, Brad Pitt, they, they went to Hollywood with no money. Nick Cannon, Hollywood with no money. And look at them now. They followed their gut. And it's a lot of people that I feel that would be where they want to be if they follow their gut. And they don't. I'm following mine. It's all about this guts. Grinding uncontrollably to stand strong, and that's what it is, man. That's what I'm all about. That's the album. Every song on there is like I'm bringing you to where I was at. In the house, in the room, on the floor, writing like this is all or nothing. You know what I'm saying? And um, basically, it was. It's still all or nothing. It's all about that guts, man. 
grinding uncontrollably to stand strong. Need to get that, man. For real. Hey, we got six hours, man, to get it some chick, man. Hold on, Jill. You don't want what I got. <laughs> Thank you. About to go to the crib. How's it going? How you doing? Hey, yeah, we should. You, you about to get on camera? Uh huh. Yeah. I had to go photo. I said, Oh uh -uh. my god. Uh -uh. You cannot. Uh -uh. <laughs> I got you another spoon. A spoon set in there got hot. It's not hot. Let me go get you another spoon. It's your boy, Duquan. Want y'all to know. Right now, this is my uh, son' playroom. This used to be my room. I could touch like the walls, man. First plat. Ever since then, it's been on. Hold on, hold on. Y'all a copy, man. Throwback. First decap CD. I'm gonna present it to Jug. Here we go, Jug. Thank you, Jug. <laughs> Mr. Tunt. First CD in the wrapper. You know what I mean? We were pressing up CDs by Master P in 99. Y'all think I'm lying? Well, no, nah, 2002. We were close enough. See, we always find old CDs funded by Mr. Joe Wynn. Let's go. They know about him. I talk about him in the documentary. I basically do this for, um, right now my passion is uh, my very first investor. Uh, his name was Joe Wynn. Uh, he was my grand, well he was my, well he was, he is my granddaddy. Cause he's still here. And um, when I graduated, you know, he was like, look, I seen you really want to do something and um, I'm gonna give you. I'm, I'm gonna give you something. I ain't really know what he was talking about. I'm about to graduate. I'm thinking maybe he gonna give me a card and he got like twenty five dollars in it. You know what I'm saying? But he gave me a check for uh, fifteen hundred dollars. And basically, he was like, "This is the fun. Whatever you're trying to do with music." And he he was by far my biggest supporter. You know, uh, he didn't really understand it. All he knew was I had so much passion about it. And you done done what I needed you to do. I wanted you to graduate. Here goes some money. Put it towards your music. And I was able to fund uh, my first CD. You know, did it straight out, out the trunk style. You know what I'm saying? And I, it was gangsta how I did it. I did it at the end of the year. You know, when you got a, uh, you picking up your cap and gown. It's time to graduate. Everybody done got their graduation money. I was literally like, yo, support me. Support my CD because I knew they had money. And I was like, man, it's only ten dollars. I was almost like fifty cent and get rich or die trying. Give me change, you know what I'm saying? But long story short, I, uh, you know, through disc makers and all that, I brought the CDs, brought a thousand CDs, did all the music I've been working on while I was in school, packaged it up, and I sold it for ten dollars. And I pretty much sold every CD to the point I reordered. You know what I'm saying? But uh. That's who I do it for, you know what I'm saying? And I do it for other people that support me and, you know, fans and stuff like that. But every time I'm on stage and doing a show, every time I'm in the studio, the person I do it first for is him. Because he believed in me. He gave me money to do it. He trusted in the fact that I was going to do right by the money. And, you know, it was that's what I do it for, man. I do it for Joe Wynn. That's my AK. Duquan, AKA DK, AKA Joe Wynn. 
Heard he hit first. What's up? We in here at Icons, man. This the man right here. The man to keep everybody looking all fresh. You know what I'm saying? I jump into gear, man, and see what you get into. Yeah, y'all gotta excuse the mess. We remodeling. We got shit everywhere, but I still got some heat in here, so we get this thing straight. That's in this suit. Icons, Jack. Duquan, aka Decap. We about to rip this Dicky show, man. About to kill it. Kill this shit. Hey, what's going on? My dog, what's up? Chilling, man. Hey, Easy E 93.3 to beat Tom Fisher over there on the phone. Bo? You know we are Bo? Bo, one of the hottest designs. What's up, baby? What's going on with you, man? <laughs> Talk to people right now. Hey, come on, baby. Come right right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a right here. WB, what's going on, man? Go way back. When I'm gonna get one of these shirts, dog? Everybody's like, okay, that's what it is. You coming to the studio? This is my dog right here. That's how we do. I'm hot. I'm just got stage. I'm tired. Though. I heard you. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two copies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing, man? You going down, man? We do all kinds of things. We have to do one over here. I'm cash over here. Thompson over there. Tired as a motherfucker. Got to put it on. Pretty much, uh, you know, I started off rapping by the name of uh, Decap, and um, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying I was that was my name, Decap. You know what I'm saying, and uh, in the whole grinding process, you know what I'm saying when it was time for me to, you know, fund, you know, fund my CD with the money my granddad gave me, I realized this is. These niggas that do graphics is charging a lot of money <laughs> to design graphic covers. And I mean, I only had $1,500. You know what I'm saying? So once, you know, disc makers got their money, that left me with like, what, 300 <laughs> So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to design my own cover. At that time, I think I brought a program. I mean, I knew some, you know, I was an artistic person. You know, I'm creative. Uh, you know, this is what I do. I do art. I can draw. So I said, it can't be that hard. So I brought a program called Coil Draw or something. And I designed my own CD cover. And boy, that was like a gift and a curse. Cause uh once you know everybody was like, dang, who who designed your cover? Who designed your cover? I was like, well shit, I did. It wasn't nothing to me, I just put it together. Hey, you would design mine, you would design mine. The next thing you know everybody like, oh decap do graphics, decap do graphics, decap do graphics. You know, and at one point, you know what I'm saying? I was kind of like started becoming ashamed of it, but I'm like, nah, like I took that same tactics and I started a graphics company and I just said, fuck it, decap graphics. And you know, with that being said, it was like, damn, I got interns, you know, started working for me. So it was like, it just kind of just took off all of me designing my own CD. 
And from there, I was just like, damn, I need a, I need a name. And that's when, you know, DJ Walton was like, Duquan. That's your name. And they know that's my birth name, Duquan. And I was like, shit, I do me every day. Duquan. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, fuck it, that's going to be my rap name. You know what I mean? And I let DCAT be my graphics name. You know what I'm saying? Which, you know what I'm saying? If y'all need graphics, you, you know how I let DCAT graphics on Twitter or something. You know what I'm saying? One of my assistants, they'll take care of you real good. But that's pretty much how my whole name came about, Duquan. And it's my name. How can I look you in the eyes? How can I tell a person buy my CD? And I'm giving them a fake name. I'm giving them somebody else's name that they earned. No, nah, man, I was born Duquan. I was raised Duquan. I'm going to give you Duquan. And by the way, I do me every day. So that's how I came up with the name Duquan, a.k.a. Decap, a.k.a. Joe Wynn. You know what I mean? And... It's crazy, you know what I'm saying? Crazy how things happen. You know, if I had to tell anybody or give anyone any advice about, you know, being in this music industry, it'll be, you know, just like three things. One, you know, I would just tell them, be on your business. Get your business right. I told you, you know, Ludacris helped me get my business right. And all he said was, I signed myself. I'm like, damn, I should do that too, you know. Um, but you want to get your business right because at the end of the day, the record business, your record deal, when you walk into that building and you're about to sign your contract, it's like you're walking into a bank. They're giving you X amount of dollars to make X amount of dollars. And all what comes in, they give you a piece. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so you want to get your business right. You want to get your team right. You want to, in this day and age, you want to have you someone that that that's stupid on that camera. You know what I'm saying? Shouts out to Jazz Walker. Stupid on the camera. Uh, he did all my videos, and you know we, you know, and and and, and when you have that, you able to just think big. You know, he was able to help me think bigger. You know what I'm saying? And we did the polo holes with Killer Mike. We did the own that drink with uh, two pistols. And most recently, we did the Fly Girl featuring Diamond from Crime Mob, which is available on iTunes now. Um, then you also want to get somebody with you that's that that that's up on their business. You know what I'm saying? And and that's close to you, so they see what's going on and they can help you. So, cause you don't want to be the one doing the business. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I got my homeboy Cam. He's he, he's stupid on the business tip. Uh, then I got supporters also that support me and I support them. You got. My homie William Boston, he got his own clothing line. I help him, he help me. You know what I'm saying? DJ Joe Crump, I help him, he help me. You know what I mean? Um, you got to have that team, man. That's very important. Because, and you need to have a team that believes in you. A lot of y'all guys got these teams that don't believe in you. If your team don't believe in you, then it, it, it all sucks. You need a team that believes in you, and you need to believe in your team. You feel me? And y'all believe in each other. You need to be about your business and get your own studio, man. A studio nowadays, you know, you can go to George's Music or something like that and get your whole studio for a thousand dollars. And that way, you save money. Even if you just want to rehearse or practice, you could do that. And then you do the real thing when you got it all up in your head in the big studio. You know, those are three things you need to do because you could constantly work. Sometimes I got the studio in my crib. I'm I'm in the boxes. You know what I mean? Swing it, letting it go, working, you know what I mean? And I could do that because it's in my house. I might wake up 2 o'clock in the morning, a.m., you know what I mean? And like, dang, oh, I got a song. I got something in my head and I can lay it down. So I would just say those three things. Get on your business, a.k.a. sign yourself. Know about your publishing. Uh, get a, a supportive team. And build your own studio. Get your own pre-production. You do that, man, you have all the components you need to become a Jay-Z, a 50 Cent, a Alicia Keys, or anybody else like that.
AKA DCAP, AKA I do me daily, Duquan. Man, I do this for, I do this for regular niggas who grew up, you know what I'm saying, in a single household, you know, that had like two ways to go and chose to go a certain way. You know what I mean? Um, I speak to them, man. You know, my music, I'm real passionate about it. Everything I got going, man, is off this gut feeling. G-U-T-S-S, -S, guts, grinding uncontrollably to stand strong. That's all I got, man. Everything I've been doing, I put into this music, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and if, I, if I could just get one person that's like, nigga, I feel you. I feel you, dog. I done did my job, man. I see myself, you know what I'm saying? I want to touch people. I want to touch souls, man. I want to be that guy where, when, when people look back, it's like, damn. I want to be in some legend shit, man. And that's why, you know, my music got message. I don't, I just, you know, I don't talk about kill, kill, shoot, shoot, bang, bang. I talk about real stuff that's got going, that I got going on. You know what I mean? And, and in this world, it's, it's a million other people that feel like me, that can't speak it, don't know how to. And them the guys I speak to, man. You know what I'm saying? This junk is for real, man. It's all or nothing. Shouts out to everybody, you know what I mean, that's doing their movement and, and, and operating off that gut feeling, man. Duquan, aka DCAP, aka Joe Man, aka I Do Me. Every time I go up, they pull me down. When I try to go in, they keep me out.